Okay. Happy Thursday. I um, hope everybody is having a good week so far. Uh, excited about getting back at home this week, having a home game here. Uh, looking forward to a great crowd. Sounds like we're, we're getting close there. We have about 43 or 44,000 tickets out. We're still trying to uh, get as many out as we can for this final Saturday um, or for this game coming up. Uh, understand that the UW game is close to sold out already. So that's exciting. Uh, things are moving in the right direction there. Uh, don't know what time that game's gonna be just yet. But we need to uh, really focus in on this one. Uh, really need to make sure we have our best, uh, our best game this year on Saturday night. Uh, that's what I told our team it's gonna take. It's gonna take us playing our best that we've played all year, four quarters of great football. Uh, you know, there's a saying that we've said at, uh, in New England and others that um, before you have to win, you have to keep from losing. And our goal uh, this week is to take care of the ball, not have a lot of penalties. The first game we had 11 penalties. The second game we had uh, five turnovers. You know, so we're looking to have a clean game, disciplined. Uh, we had five penalties this past game. It was a good job going that from 11 to five. Keep bringing that down. Turnovers, we had two the first game, five this game. We got to bring that down. And uh, if we could do that, you know, we need to do simple better. We need to do simple better and find a way to put ourselves in position to compete, knowing that we've got an offense that is a challenge. Uh, they're a two-back offense that runs power extremely well, uh, similar or somewhat similar to North Dakota State of a year ago. Uh, we know that uh, there's going to be a challenge there. Defensively, uh, we know that uh, the defensive coordinator came from the SEC, has a really good feel on stopping the passing game and uh, some of the things that he does with his coverages and his fronts. So we're, we got a challenge there, and then we have to do a great job in special teams. So it's going to take all three phases for us to have the outcome we want, and our goal is to go out there and play our best ball. Uh, when you looked at Jacob Cowing's tape from UTEP, what, what stood out to you? As production, the amount of uh, run after catch that he's able to get to, the fact that he was able to put up uh, on 67 catches, I think it was over 1,100 yards, uh, his ability to make guys miss in space, um, the, the toughness that he shows blocking, the toughness that he shows catching the ball over the middle. Really, there's been no surprises with Jacob Cowing uh, from when – from what we saw on film to what we've seen in person, Jacob Cowling has been the consistent, uh, soon to be pro, we'll call it. And uh, as he's gotten better, stronger, uh, I think that just experience gets you better. But uh, Jacob's film showed the type of player that he was gonna be when he got here. And he's being recruited by a lot of schools. What, do you, what was the communication like with him? What do you think ultimately sold Arizona? Well, I think I'd be naive to think it was in at least 51% that he has a son here, and the family aspect made a huge difference for Jacob. Uh, to be able to come back home, to be within an hour and a half of his son, uh, he grew up in the state of Arizona, uh, to be closer to his mom, all those things uh, were a huge part of it. The other part of it that I think he really uh, appreciated about us was the way we were gonna use the wide receivers in our offense, and the way we throw the football, the importance that we uh, place, on wide receiver development and throwing the football. Uh, he came in here, had 85 catches in his first year, and um, our goal is to help him get back to that number again this year and be one of those wide receivers that has, um, you know, really historic numbers. If we can get him to another 1,000-yard year and um, another 80 so catches. I know every game has equal importance on the schedule, but considering that this is the last one before Pac-12, is this – you look at this as maybe the last opportunity to, to fine tune and tweak things? Yeah, you know, Brian, I talked to the guys about four quarters of the season. This is the end of the first quarter, and um, we got to win every quarter. And that's what we talk about. We, you know, you want to go eight and four, you got to win every quarter, right? You want to go better than eight and four, you got to do better than just, you know, go two and one. So for us, <coughs> for us, we got to win this quarter. Um, we're putting. Well, you know, Coach Speak would say every week you're trying to go 1-0, right? And that's, of course, the case. But with this game coming off of the type of loss that we had, um, we're, we're not settling for moral victories. This isn't year zero any longer, you know, where we were 
trying to compete for four quarters and seeing if we could stay healthy for four quarters. Uh, we went into Starkville expecting to win. We're disappointed we didn't. And now it's our responsibility this week to, um, to channel all of those frustrations and then see uh, how good we could be. You know, we want to see how good we can be by 1130 on a Saturday evening. What are some of the areas you want to see uh, improve defensively in this game? What are some of those things you're looking at? And how would you assess their performance so far through the first three games now, coming up now, through the season? Um, <coughs> UTEP's performance or our defense's performance? Uh, well, I think our defense, certainly in the first two games, have shown um, the value of getting bigger up front. You could see that the size of our defense has enabled us to put more pressure on the quarterback, uh, we've held teams to, I think, under 200 yards passing this past week and pretty close to it the first week. Uh, we held team two, in two games. We've given up, in regulation time, 27 points. And uh, that's 13 and a half points a game uh, in, two, in eight quarters. That's really good. Uh, it's really, really good. 17 points a game when you count the overtime. Um, I think that uh, tackling is going to be at a premium this week. It's, it's going to be critical. They've got two running backs. One guy's close to 220 pounds. One guy's 230 pounds. Those guys are big, uh, big boys to tackle. They've got a very good tight end at number 87. They've got a very good move tight end, fullback in 43. And um, those guys are going to bring a challenge to our linebacking core and our D-line. Um, when it comes to our passing game, they've got a, a pass defense. They've got a quarterback that's thrown for over 7,800 yards in his career. Uh, veteran, and we have to make sure that we um, we do a great job defending the pass, defending their receivers, not letting number one uh, get going, and uh, we know it's going to be a challenge. Jim, what do you like about the way that your, your, your linemen are picking up outside rushers? There was two plays in particular, one in the first half where Jordan kind of peeled back off of his initial block to get an outside guy that set up a nice play. And then there was one in the second half where you hit T-Mac over the middle because John was able to come off and hit get an outside guy. Uh, just the pockets have been real nice for you, Jake. Yeah, I, I think that our protection has been at a very, very high level. Uh, to only be, we had one sack in the game against Mississippi State. Um, can't even remember if we had one against NAU. One sack in each game. So, and we throw the ball 35 times a game. So when you're sitting there, we've had 70 attempts, we've had two sacks. Um, and we've always, we've believed going into the season, a healthy Jordan Morgan, a healthy Jonas Avenea, you know, th those are two outstanding college offensive linemen. And then the three guys inside, I know Jonah was playing more inside this past week, but um, the three guys inside that are going to really help us, I, I'm really hopeful on Polito. I still haven't gotten the final word there. Um, if not Polito, then we'll obviously have Borjan and uh, Jonah again in their combination. But, um, you know, the way we're protecting right now, it's giving us an opportunity to take shots down the field when we want. It gives us an opportunity in our screen game because we can get guys out athletically. And then when you can create a dish or a pocket like we've been able to create with the edge rushers, being able to move them from uh, the core, it's enabled Jaden to work in the pocket a little bit longer and be able to find some guys down the field um, at a little bit later in the down. Jaden kind of being patient. I know he hit Jonah twice on screen tour. He really kind of let Jonah get closer to the, to the first down marker before he threw the pass, just the patience. Yeah, you know, I think that um, <coughs> as we're growing in the offense, I think Jaden's 72% completion over two games, uh, which would be obviously a career high mark for him. I think it would be a university mark. I think Nick is at 69% is the highest I've ever had for a year. We've got 10 games left to play, but uh, we got to try to see if we can maintain completing three quarters of our passes. Uh, with that comes patience. With that comes the ability to throw check downs and understanding, you know, I'm going to show them uh, today the Eagles' first 19 passes of their game against the Patriots. They threw it to a wide receiver once. And uh, you just have to understand, like, let the game come to you. If you let the game come to you and you play with patience, uh, you'll have no problem completing passes to wide receivers at the appropriate time. 
But um, in this case, uh, our running backs are really good at catching the ball. Uh, two questions. One, how does Jaden handle criticism? And in your experience, how would you like to see your quarterbacks handle criticism? And uh, then just an injury update beyond Kalita. Yeah, um, the, the easy one is the injury update uh, going into this game. Uh, Wyatt's cleared. Stukes is cleared. Um, Dalton Johnson is cleared. So the only person that we're just waiting on is Polito. Um, and that we'll probably know today or tomorrow morning. Uh, as a, When it comes to criticism, um, I don't know. I don't think I'm the easiest guy to play for when it comes to a mentality of perfection. Um, when you look for things to be right all the time and you want it to be perfect and you want to give um, guys an opportunity to be successful. Um, I'm probably more critical on myself than anybody is when it comes to am, have I given him the best opportunity to be successful? Have I made it clear to him what we're looking for? Um, is there something I need to do differently or better? Um, criticizing a quarterback can go either way. You know, are you going to criticize them in the – confines of your office? Are you going to do it in front of the team? Are you going to do it in the locker room, on the practice field? It all based, it's all based upon, let's call it, how, you're, um, how the team is approaching a given day or a given week. Um, when it comes to standard and expectations, I could say it's very high. Uh, there's a standard to play here. There's an expectation to play how we want our quarterbacks to play, the amount of time that we ask him to um, give to football, whether that be to his body, whether that be to in the weight room, whether that be in the training room, the film room, or um, on the practice field, staying after, uh, leading the way, there's a very high expectation. And um, if he doesn't fulfill that expectation, there's a significant critique. But um, I would say this year in comparison to last year, um, it's not even close with his work ethic. I do not necessarily criticize on turnovers um, as much as I like to teach on turnovers and see what we can do to eliminate some while also realizing it's part of the game. Uh, so we asked Michael Wiley the other day um, if there was a, a comparison for Jaden and he couldn't come up with one. What's your comparison for Jaden or other quarterbacks that you've coached or have seen? Oh, a football comparison? Um. You know, I mean, I think that he has traits of a lot of players out there. Um, you know, he has traits of a Patrick Mahomes where he can make plays off schedule on a consistent basis. Um, he's not afraid to throw the ball at any given moment. I, I give him the Brett Favre comparison um, where <clears throat> he has a toughness about him. He has a competitive stamina that he's okay with. Um, he has such great confidence in himself that if he makes a mistake or turns the ball over, um, that's not going to affect his ability to go back out there. Um, I think that you look at a lot of these players, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna give comparisons of like guys we don't know, right? Or bad players, that wouldn't be a, a comparison we'd wanna do. So we're always gonna pull from the great ones that are out there. But we watch a lot of Jalen Hurts. We watch a lot of Patrick Mahomes. We watch, um, we certainly talk about the Favs of the world and, um, the biggest thing for him is, yeah, he makes wild plays, but I tell him, you know, you don't need to be Superman, just be Batman. Use your tools. Okay, guys.